We will call to order the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority, City of Crescent City, County of Del Norte, State of California. And if you would please uh, call the roll. Yes. Eli Naffa? Here. Blake and Score? Here. Jason Greenow? Here. Chris Howard? Here. Very good. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we uh, will open up public comment today. Any member of the public can address the Solid Waste Management Authority on any matter on or off the agenda after receiving recognition from myself please give your name and address for the record and limit your comments if you could to three minutes do we have any general public comment this afternoon seeing none we'll close public comment and we'll move on into our open session items we have two items on the consent uh, agenda the uh, minutes from the special session on tuesday the 23rd 2017 and a budget transfer and I'm assuming that the budget transfer is the number updated number that we have here that's correct sir the uh, budget transfer in the amount of ten thousand six hundred and forty three dollars move to approve I have a motion to approve Do we have a second second we have a motion and a second would you please pull the vote I'm sorry hold on do we have any public comment on our consent agenda all right close public comment now if you'd please pull the vote Mr. Nafa yes commissioner greenow yes commissioner howard yes chair and score yes very good uh, that ends our consent agenda we'll move on into uh, our director and treasurer's report mr ward yes thank you chair and score so uh, first on our mattress collection event on june 10th we received 328 mattresses and box springs and we have scheduled the next free mattress collection event for saturday september 23rd the weekend after our household hazardous waste event uh, regarding uh, going through other items that won't be discussed elsewhere on the agenda uh, included in the director's report is a is an estimate for the repairs at the landfill from Hemmingson construction and they estimate that the erosion repairs that are necessary will cost eighty thousand seven hundred dollars to repair this was a higher price tag than we anticipated. So we'll include that as part of the items that we discuss with the uh, county auditor, uh, Clinton Shad and Sherrick Cron to discuss how to best approach the financing of these things. In this case, we're uh, sincerely hoping that this is reimbursable as an emergency expense from the, through the Office of Emergency Services as this was declared as a disaster and we did start our paperwork on that process. but. Uh, even if it is reimbursable, it will be a cash flow issue in which we'll have to expend the money to do the repairs and then look to get reimbursed after the fact. But in any case, we will be talking about the best way to approach that. So I'm, at this point, I'm not looking to the board for action, but we will keep you up to date about how we approach that because we would like to do those repairs this summer. Uh, attachment B is a discussion of the status of negotiations of the potential land swap for a southern portion of the landfill property for a, a piece of property um, owned by uh, uh, parks that are adjacent to the airport. They're looking to reduce some of the level of trees there. But uh, in general, we did go out there with park staff and they seem to think that this could be worked out, but there are still details to be worked out. As far as our agency is concerned, the main issue is that one of our gas monitoring points is uh, along the southern property border, so that would need to be moved but the construction of a gas well is simple enough that we don't see this as a, either a major expense or a major uh, barrier to the project at all. So generally things are progressing well there. Uh, other things that are going on, uh, we'll be meeting with the Talawadine Nation following up on initial conversations we had with their, um, um, the uh, executive director, the acting executive director. Uh, we've been referred to staff and we'll start working through them. At this point in time, this is the early exploratory stages. We have not yet brought this to the, uh, the tribal board for any sort of decision. And it's like I said, it's the early formative stages to seeing how can we work together to develop a facility for mutual benefit. 
Um, regarding staffing, uh, we have worked with the county personnel department. We're looking to hire an additional refuse site attendant. Haley Smith was a refuse site attendant. She's now working as our account clerk and performing well. That does leave a vacancy for a permanent position there. We do have uh, currently uh, three temporary part-time refuse site attendants, but with Haley moving into the account clerk position, we still have a gap in the staffing there for the refuse site attendants especially during the summer months as we were open extra days in both Klamath and Gaskey. Finally, we did do a fire drill uh, at the, and generally we, uh, as all good fire drills, we learned things that we could do to improve, um, including how to turn off the bloody alarm once it goes off. <laughs> but eventually we got there. It's always good. <laughs> but learning experiences. <laughs> Um, and uh, we have been approached by staff from Cal Recycle uh, indicating that um, we do need to start uh, looking at some of the planning that's necessary for organics processing facilities. Again, this is sort of an initial heads up. And as there, uh, our decisions uh, moving forward, we'll bring this back to the board. Uh, regarding legislative advocacy, because the board did adopt an opposed position on SB 168, uh, the authority's letter was one of the very few letters to be submitted uh, on that bill before it came to a vote because it was, it was a rather surprise move taken out of committee, brought to the floor for a vote, and most governments were not in a position to have already adopted the position. So good job on the board being prepared to do that. Our letter was effective in that uh, it did not pass out of the Senate, but it, is, uh, it has become a two-year bill, so there's a possibility they might reintroduce it next year. Finally, uh, also attached to the director's report is a summary report from Californians Against Waste regarding some of the efforts to address the crises that are, is still facing uh, buyback and processing centers across the state of California. There is a, generally an underfunding of those facilities, and there is still a need to address that. But at this point in time, it's a little unclear as to what that fix might be. Finally, uh, we will be having a uh, as part of our July 4th celebrations and the, the support the board has already voted on to uh, support the first Surfriders Foundation on July 5th, they'll be doing a cleanup of South Beach. So um, if those, anybody's interested in helping uh, clean up after our 4th of July celebrations, they'll be meeting along Anchor Way on July 5th. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions? Yes. Mr. Neff, um, regarding the uh, landfill repair bid, mm -hmm. uh, do we have any other bids or not? We don't, and um, there aren't a lot of contractors that are capable of doing that kind of work. So there aren't a lot of contractors. Uh, under most circumstances, we would be working with the county roads department to affect these kinds of repairs. And while that would be acceptable and, and fundable under the Office of Emergency Services, the downside is that uh, the county's also experienced a number of uh, significant erosion activities throughout the county, and so the road department's really focused on those. So they're not available to do our repairs. Okay. And then uh, the other question I was going to ask was regarding the last meeting you guys had uh, approved the uh, fair family day. Uh, what is the family rate? I didn't see anything in the agenda that addressed that. It just said that it's a reduced rate, but I'm just wondering how reduced is it? Uh, this, uh, this is uh, part of the ticketing pricing uh, by the fair, and I don't know okay. off the top of my head what the family rate is. I'm sure that you could either mm -hmm. find out by calling them or their okay. website. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? All right, you can go on to the financials. Okay. Uh, I, I, I apologize for um, not having all the financial reports in the initial publication of the agenda. You'll see that uh, uh, at, by your side you have the supplemental reports from sections 2.4 and 2.5. In overview, uh, our finances are still looking good. This has been a very good year for us. Our cash in the bank is currently uh, 1029329 plus the 198000 the last uh, payment for the uh, transfer station loan but it continues to increase and actually uh, our, if you look at the handout information, I can point out under two point, well specifically 2.5, you can see on the first page, which is the last page of the handout, 
Uh, in May, uh, we brought in 106,885. So that was the biggest month in the history of this agency. Huh. So good job to all the staff who um, they see every one of those customers. And so more activity means more work and, and everybody's performing pretty well. So we are um, over 7% ahead of budget on our main revenue source, which is authority tipping fees. And um, we're a little bit behind budget on franchise fees, but that's just down by about 2,500. So on the whole, we're ahead by over $66,000 compared to what our budgeted income was. So in general, our finances look to be in pretty good shape, which I'm very happy about because as I mentioned, we will be discussing shortly with the county auditor how we're going to approach the financing of the transfer station floor repair as well as the erosion repairs at the landfill. All right. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Ward regarding the financials? Yes. Uh, regarding the second page of 2.5, mm -hmm. where it has the franchise fee, it mm -hmm. shows that over last year at this point we're 1% below? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Is, is there a reason for that? Well, uh, budgeting is an imperfect process. Um, and the in, in general, it, it just means that we're there are slightly fewer customers from Recology than we were anticipating is, okay. is kind of the short of it. Do you have a, another interpretation, sir? Okay. Okay, that's fine. But it's not far off. In terms of percentage, uh, being $2,500 $2, off on a $273,000 budget item is, is pretty close. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, and now that I see, because I was looking at the uh, last year's revenue compared to this year, but last year you also had June, which was an additional 24000 So. So once you add that uh, to uh, this year's, we'd, we'd actually end up being higher. So yeah, yeah, we'll be close. Yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah. All right. Do you okay. have any, uh, any other questions? All right. Let's go ahead and move on then. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, respecting uh, Heidi Kunstall's time, I, may I suggest that we take uh, item 7.1, which is the approval of the... Uh, in the vehicle authority budget? Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Comes. Howard's shaking his head. I just want the... <laughs> yes. All right, let's go ahead and move to... Uh, if we're going to do that, we need to adjourn as the Solid Waste Management Authority, and we'll reconvene with uh, the members who are present uh, as the Abandoned Vehicle Abatement Authority so that we can address item 7.1. that Kira all right okay. uh, this is essentially the same budget that we brought uh, back in April to you as a draft budget for recommendation have not made any changes uh, one thing that I wanted to report back to you today, which I don't really have anything to report, was regarding our balance regarding paying um, back the Department of Motor Vehicles for the amount of money that they spent uh, reactivating our AVA program. Uh, we had sort of some uh, contrary information between what DMV staff has given us and what we found on the State Controller's Office. They ended up sending us $1,928 for the third quarter, which we thought they were going to retain everything in order to, you know, repay the 11000 that we needed to pay them. So we're trying to clear that up, and we hope next month to return with a complete balance on the ABA budget, the year-end uh, tally of where we are. And I'm available to answer any questions you may have. I just have a comment, and this yeah. is something I asked. Director Ward about when we're together it's it, the abandoned vehicles within our community ebbs and flows but recently it's been flowing a lot more and the question I asked was for him to look to see if we could contribute to this fund specifically to help bolster it in years when we're falling short before the end of a fiscal year mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you have any answers to that yet, and I don't anticipate you do, but just in case, I just wanted the sure, I think it's a great commission to be aware that um, like seeing our streets cleaned of boats and 
RVs and everything else that gets tossed around out there. Well, of course, we're very interested in keeping the community clean and, and good looking as well. And, and we certainly support the AVA program. As I did discuss this issue with Director Kunstall, uh, what we concluded was that it would probably be best to head into next fiscal year and see how the budget is and maybe revisit the issue about mid fiscal year and see how we're doing. And so just for the sake of the authority, what, what are the processes involved in identifying uh, specific vehicles that, are, that are, are going to be ones that we select for uh, using the abatement funds? We generally try to take care of all of those that are brought to our attention that have been abandoned. However, whenever it comes to a situation where we have to sort of go into a triage, we typically look at vehicles that are in more high priority areas, gateways to our community, w neighborhoods where you might have more complaints, mm -hmm. uh, and those become elevated as far as prioritizing which ones we remove. Okay. Good. Thank you. And, and one of our ongoing issues, just to, to make the board aware, is the um, essentially abandonment of mobile homes uh, at, because they are considerably more expensive. We have less capacity to deal with those in county. The rates to take them out of the county are quite a bit more expensive. And then oftentimes they're filled with trash in the process. So all of those things make abatement of those particularly expensive and problematic. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's any other grants or some other money that we could get. Uh, and the reason is, is because of three words, transfer station floor. And that's because we need to address that. And unfortunately, I don't think until we get that taken care of, I don't think we're going to have any extra money that we can put towards other things. Uh, the county and the city have the ability to use their professional services money that line item that they have probably in their traditional budgets in order to pay for these types of activities if the ABA program doesn't have it. But we're really hoping once we are able to get square with the Department of Motor Vehicles after this last year that we may not be in this situation. Uh, we're going to do our very best to stay on the upside where we may not need any additional money. Um, I mean, we've had two years in, over the last four where I think we've had some issues but this last one was really unanticipated. I mean, it was a real shock to all of us. Thankfully, we had a fund balance from the prior year mm -hmm. going in that saved us as much as it did, but still we do feel we're behind and we do have a little backlog of RVs, but we will try to do the best with what we have before we, um, you know, we'll evaluate it at mid-year and if there is a, a real dire situation, um, we would come to you. But if not, we would take every avenue we can to avoid that. As far as the, the people who abandon the vehicles, uh, is there revenue that we're able to obtain through the driver's license and through their vehicle registration, rather? Uh, we're, the state collects $1 per each vehicle registered, and that's what comes back to us, a fraction of it, once the Department of Motor Vehicles has collected their uh, collection fee and the state controller's office has collected their fee. So. Unfortunately, I mean, uh, most of the, I'm thinking it may be getting off topic, but the majority of um, our costs have to do with the recreational vehicles. And if they're only contributing $1, I think it, it, in reality, there's a disproportionate burden that they place on us having to retrieve them than a, a vehicle. And, but that's I was just wondering, like, in other words, if someone abandons a vehicle, it seems like there should be a ticket where they would have to pay X amount of dollars. It's very difficult to track the people down. They're usually, they, they're not wanting to be found. Okay. But we do, we have tried that in, uh, you know, in some situations where we might believe that there's some chance of being able to recover our costs associated mm -hmm. with doing it, we can do it. But mm -hmm. um, actually that was one of our cost attempts to try to save money several years ago when we did find ourselves in a bad situation. We decided to try to go after a number of individuals and I don't believe we collected from anyone. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fruitless, but it's always something to consider. Yeah, I'm just hoping at least on a state level that they could be more proactive to get it in a way where it can help discourage people from doing that because they know they have a penalty of $500 or 1000 or something like that, you know, that they would be liable for. Sure. 
okay. we'll, we can pursue that further. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? Um, <coughs> all right, we motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. We have a public comment. Seeing none, would you please pull the vote? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair Inscore? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Heidi. All right, we will, uh, having no other action for the abandoned vehicle abatement uh, authority, we will adjourn from the abandoned vehicle abatement authority and reconvene with uh, the members present as the uh, solid waste management authority. And we will move on into our agenda. We have nothing for landfill or post closure. Uh, we do have uh, some discussions regarding our franchise collections under item 4.1. Mr. Ward. This is the first step towards what I hope is very good news. Um, Recology sent us a letter um, earlier in the month and let us know that they are in the process of their efforts to purchase Eel River Disposal, which includes a processing facility on the Samoa Peninsula. So I'd like to invite Mr. Herber up uh, briefly to summarize the status of their negotiations. Afternoon. Hey. Jeremy Herbert, General Manager for Recology. Uh, just a real brief update, more or less. Uh, we have entered into an agreement to purchase the over disposal. Um, included in that is the Samoa facility, which is on the peninsula there in uh, Eureka. And uh, so we are hoping uh, through numerous board activities and contracts we're working on uh, currently, we're hoping to be able to close on the purchase uh, somewhere at the end of July. Um, and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that processing plant. Um, it's, it's, it's operating correctly uh, uh, currently, um, but we're hoping to you know, tweak it a little bit and, and get that thing uh, moving a little bit better. So that's where we're at with that. Um, so I think you know, pretty much what we're asking for is the, our, our, our extension for 60 days and our processing agreement is f for us to get through all the um, analyticals and the final closures of this facility in order to get a processing agreement between that uh, Samoa processing facility and the Solid Waste Authority. Chair, motion to approve the request by Recology Loan Art for a 60-day processing agreement extension. I'll second that, but I had a question. Is that's that, so that's, still, just to clarify, that's a, a motion to approve change order 12? Yes. Um, that's a recycling facility? It's a recycling processing facility. Oh. Uh, so that's uh, where the recyclables from Del Norte will go directly to that facility where they will be processed. Meaning and sorted and cleaned? They're going to be sorted, they're going to be bailed, they're going to okay. be uh, shipped out from that facility. Uh, I think the idea is to uh, encompass as many um, communities as possible. Uh, for once again, the, the larger amount of tonnage, the better. So I think they're going to be recruiting this, uh, a good portion of Humboldt County and, and possibly looking at other jurisdictions to try to bring into that processing facility. It'll be about pretty much the, the, the only one in Northern California um, that's, well, it'll be the furthest north one that's, that'll be up. So Excellent. That's, our, that's our goal. Thank you. Okay. Did you have a motion by Commissioner Howard and a second by Commissioner Greeno to approved collections change order number 12. Is there any other discussion on behalf of the board? Maybe public comment regarding change order number 12. Seeing none, I'll bring it back. Would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Greenow? Yes. Commissioner Nafa? Yes. Chair Inscore? Yes. Very good. That is excellent news, uh, Mr. Herber. Or I hope it ends up being excellent news for Recology as well. Uh, I know that processing is not easy, but at least you have a, a source now. All right, um, transfer station, Mr. Ward. 
Uh, thank you, Chair Inscore. So we have a cost estimate now from uh, Jesse Solario, who you met at the last meeting, and he's estimating the the transfer station floor repairs are looking at a cost of about 131,653 as the engineer's cost estimate. So that is report, repairing just a portion of the floor. You can see the, the indication of where that is um, on the near the last page. It's the cross hatched area labeled as the picking area. Um, it is primarily where the um, big machinery grabs the material and loads it onto the trailer. So it does receive most of the wear and tear. Um, it is pleasantly surprising and a little bit lower than our initial estimates uh, we're looking at, but it is a large enough dollar amount that we do need to have that conversation with the county auditor I alluded to. So that would be the next step. Uh, we're not looking for specific action from the board at this time. I'm just uh, wanted you to be informed about the status of the project. So one of chair. Yes. Why is such a big ticket item on mobilization? Uh, right. There are very what am few, I missing? This is not a standard concrete job. This is not anything that any contract, concrete contractor in Humboldt or Delmar County could do because it's a very specialized product. And specifically, they, they pre-mix the, the concrete mix and then ship that. So, and they mobilize a whole crew because in terms of a project like this, what's really important to our agency is minimal downtime. They're not shipping this from their location in Southern California. They're mixing it on site at either a They're batch plant in Oregon or a batch plant here off of Lake Girl Drive, right? I, I, I don't know exactly where they're mixing it, but it is a very specialized I mean, product and it is Well, not. I understand that, but that does that would include the floor topping, not the mobilization of equipment to get here. That seems like a massively high figure unless they're bringing in some kind of piece of equipment that requires flaggers to come up from Southern California. It just seems way out of line. It's, I, I can look into that. Uh, it is, like I said, it's a specialized job. They do it over a period of three days to minimize the, yeah. the period of time that it's closed. So they, it, they're bringing up their whole crew. They're mm -hmm. plotting, plucking them here for the weekend and mm -hmm. they're working. Well, there's got to be something evening. else that's going into that mobilization that I'm just not seeing. So okay, love to see some more on it. We'll I will look into that. Investigate. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a, a I think that maybe in an attempt to simplify this estimate, it maybe doesn't really tell us what's what, because with with almost half of the cost involved in mobilization, mm -hmm. mobilization to me, and I'm assuming this is what Mr. Howard is thinking, is is just moving the equipment here to do the work, and it it may be that the the cost of all of their personnel costs to do this is all wrapped into mobilization, which doesn't sound like mobilization. That, that's what I most strongly suspect because well, this is absolutely not the kind of job that you can just go to a I local think jobs board and hire. it would be good hire. for us before we approve something in the future that, that there's a little bit better estimate of what, what these cost breakdowns actually are. So, cause uh, yes, this, you're correct. This is a preliminary estimate. But it is good news that, that of the total amount of money. So when we were talking millions of dollars previously, yeah. Yeah, because when I mobilize a well drilling crew up here, it runs me about 1500 or $1,600 from Eureka to mobilize the equipment up here. That's including every piece of equipment they need to get right. up here. Right. And so there's something I'm missing, and I appreciate any yeah. additional information you can bring. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Um First of all, regarding the uh, fact that it's the picking area, mm -hmm. were we, at least I was under the impression before we were talking about the whole transfer station floor, is, is that we, we were always only talking about the picking area? We were always talking about only a portion of the oh, floor. portion, okay. And then the second question would be as far as the engineering costs, because it said that that's not included in this. So any idea how much that may be? Short answer is I don't know yet. Okay. else and is does the rest of the floor look good do we have a, an I, idea I, of, of are we looking at what five ten years before yeah. we have to do the rest of it or 
I, I specifically walked the floor in the early morning when it was clear to look at the difference in the areas and without a doubt the area that we're focusing on is, is the most eroded. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly we've seen wear in the other areas, but it's not nearly as bad and it's not going to see the, the kind of intense effort that, that the, the specific area we're looking to repair does. That said, I, I'd say we probably have another 10 or 15 years on those sections of the floor before we would have to look at similar kinds of repair. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any public comment regarding the, uh, this discussion <coughs> of the transfer station floor? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. We'll go ahead and move on with our agenda. We have some uh, general solid waste authority matters. Uh, 6.1 is the proposed budget. Mr. Ward. I have a brief PowerPoint on this. So this is the continuation of, this, of the budget discussion that we initiated a few months back. Uh, this is a brief summary of the things that the Solid Waste Authority does, primarily for the benefit of the people looking at home, but we uh, administer the, the facility operations, uh, including providing staff at the Delmar County Transfer Station, the Klamath and Gasky Transfer Stations. We maintain and monitor the Crescent City Landfill. We use the revenues from the transfer station to cover permit and other obligations associated with the landfill. We're responsible for plans, permits, and programs associated with solid waste, recycling, composting, and household hazardous waste. Um, we administer public meetings, such as the one we're attending today. We develop service standards and administer the collections franchise contracts, such as the change order that was recently approved earlier this meeting, the Abandoned Vehicle Abatement Service Authority, whose budget you approved just a moment ago. Uh, responding to new legislation, as I discussed in the director's report, and the adoption and enforcement of authority ordinances, such as the one that enforces the collections franchise. Even with these uh, budget changes that have been approved in the last few meetings and this budget, our, the Del Norte County Transfer Station will retain the uh, reputation we have for having the lowest rates in the region, both in terms of minimum charge and lowest charge per ton for mixed solid waste. This is the direct rate comparison. You can see the next uh, cheapest facility is the Humboldt County uh, Waste Management Authority facility on Hawthorne Street, and they still are more expenses by about 5% from the authorities' services. So looking at our budget for the fiscal year 1718, authority revenues come from the transfer station and franchise fees and grants. So our agency receives no taxes and this budget is based on those revenues. Budget is proposed to the authority board initially on the April 11th. It was reviewed by the supervisors on April 25th, the city council on June 5th. This budget incorporates CPI-based rate adjustments included in all the budget projections and approved by, transfer, uh, by um, change orders in prior meetings. This budget includes updated cost projections from the Del Norte County Auditor, including revised payroll expenses uh, according to our union agreement, increased payment for our other post-employment benefits, uh, and we're matching our annual required contribution, so that's going up to 163,516. I believe the current Payment on that amount is 11125 but we're that's far below the annual required contribution. And it also increased the interfund cost plan by 13000 since last year. That's the payment to the county for the good services, such as uh, videoing these meetings, posting them online, uh, our conversations with the auditor and the personnel department. That's all covered by that interfund cost plan. We uh, Prior to adopting this budget, uh, the board will go through a public hearing process just to uh, receive any public comments before final adoption. This is our current staff. You can see that today, uh, Kira Seymour is cross-training to uh, provide clerking services as we are looking at possibly shifting some of those job duties moving forward. But in any case, it's uh, just good practice to be cross-trained. Uh, Catherine Brewer, there is our administrative assistant performing fine. Haley Smith, we just talked about, she used to be a refuse site attendant, and that's what created the vacancy at the very bottom on the listing of the refuse site attendants. Uh, 
So looking at overall system revenues, this is based looking backwards. So this is for fiscal year 15-16, and it's probably worth noting that uh, Recology's fiscal year is slightly different than the fiscal years of Hambro and, and Swama. Their fiscal year closes in October. But in general, Recology receives uh, just under 60% of the revenue uh, for total solid waste dollars spent in Del Norte County. Hambro receives about 25% of that revenue. And the authority, although our agency is responsible for this entire package, the agency operates on just 16% of the revenue. Uh, and in terms of actual projected revenues for the coming fiscal year, you can see that most of the uh, authority's budget is dominated by payments to Hambro WSG for their good services operating the transfer station and disposing and recycling the materials received there. Uh, the orange is the authority service fees to do everything that we do, uh, plus the franchise fees and grants. Looking at our expenses, you can see the largest portion of our expenses are, again, for transfer station operations to Hambro WSG. And the next largest is for salaries and benefits, followed by transfer station loan payments. Uh, our big increase here on the other post-employment benefits funding. Uh, do this blue bar here is depreciation, unlike most uh, businesses or the city or the county. As a joint powers authority, the authority is required to fund depreciation, meaning it's actual cash expense, meaning that we budget for it, and then each year we expect our, our cash reserves to increase by that amount. So that's uh, over $90,000. Uh, then the next is professional services, then it's important to recognize that the transfer station floor repair and the landfill erosion repair are not included in this budget currently. So uh, we will be talking about the work plan shortly, but as part of the budget process, we try to fund the activities that are coming up. So uh, the work plan additions are listed there, but I think we'll probably, I'll defer that until we actually come to the discussion of the work plan. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the uh, budget. Uh, but at this point, after the public hearing, uh, we're poised for approval. And I, I'm not sure I've ever fully comprehended this, and maybe it's just me, but what happens to this annual depreciation money every year? Mm -hmm. Where is it? It builds our cash reserves. That's part of what has accumulated into that cash solid waste line that's over a million dollars currently. Part of that has been the and, depreciation and that then accumulates. And yet we, we can't simply use that money to, to repair that which has depreciated? Such an excellent question. I could not agree more. Isn't the point of having a, a depreciation fund to fund that which depreciates, like the transfer station floor? I'd like to invite you to the meeting coming up. <laughs> um, I, I think those are really, really excellent questions. My general understanding is that there is a balanced budget act that does place restrictions on how much money that we can use because in general, the authority uh, looked, looking at the entity as a total entity still has a significant liability associated with the landfill. And if one actually documents that liability and subtracts that from our cash balance as an entity, we're still in the hole. I think that's what is creating some of the restrictions on how we can spend our money. So until, until the, 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 our, our liability with landfill gets below our cash balance, we can't use it yet? There are restrictions on how much we can use and how we can use it, and that, those are I what we'll... I think we need to keep asking this question, because it, to, to me, it is, it's foolhardy to be starting to look at how we may have to cut this, cut that, apply for more grants when we have money in the bank because of good management of the resources we do have uh, and to, to be pushing out uh, responsible maintenance of our facility because of some formula that somebody created, I think we need to keep asking this question and if the auditor maybe needs to come and explain to us why it is we can't have a better discussion uh, about this. So, Thank you, sir. I will do my best to follow that direction. Thank you. It just seems a little ridiculous that we have to continue to take out the, the people's credit card. Yeah. And um, uh, Mr. Taylor, is there anything further you would like to ask of the board to make sure that we're following their direction? Yeah. 
We will. We will, and we'll bring it back. Yes, the government does work in mysterious ways. No, we don't take any of their taxes, but yes, they do still put their regulations on us. Amazing. We are good managers of the resources we have, and yet we're still being forced to do things that negatively impact our ability to do business efficiently and effectively going into the future. I, I couldn't agree more, and specifically, I, I will drill down on the depreciation Thank item. Thank you. Because as a joint powers authority that we're required to fund depreciation, and yet we have limits on how what we can use that money, is, uh, is an issue that we should understand better. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Neff. Yeah, regarding the increase in the inner fund cost plan, uh, what, where did, you know, what's the 13,000 for as far as increase? That is something that is, as it's been explained to me, is aggregated and distributed across the departments. So uh, in the Community Development Department, the uh, uh, Health and Human Services Department, they each have a portion of this interfund cost plan for things like the use of this building and the, the services that we use. So, and I, my understanding is that it's done in arrears, so depending upon how the costs were a couple years back, that impacts what gets allocated in the year moving forward. But the short answer is I don't know how it's allocated. That would be an answer a best provided by the county auditor. So in other words, at, a, at the meeting on Thursday, you could ask? I could ask. I don't really expect on that front that they'll give us much detail. Uh, as a joint powers authority, of course, the authority could go on its own and not uh, use the county services, but then we'd have to find a meeting room. We'd have to uh, work out how we're going to address personnel services. There are many services that w would be challenging to, to immediately fill. I, I think since we are a joint powers authority, it would make sense that we get a better explanation than as if we were just another department in the county. Okay. I can tell you this. The county is required by the state controller's office to do um, time studies and your certain employees of the county are supposed to write down how much time they spent working for the authority and they have an they what they call an effective rate personnel rate and that's effect essentially billed to the authority and other uh, entities like first five and the airport um, they also are subject to these cost sharing agreements Thank you. All right. Any other questions regarding the, the proposed budget? About public comment? Do we have any public comment on the uh, budget proposal for fiscal year 2017-18? Seeing no public comment, we'll close public comment. We'll bring it back to the commission for uh, action. I move that we approve and adopt the budget for the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority budget for the fiscal year of 2017 and 18. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Would you please pull the vote? Commissioner Nafa? Yes. Commissioner Greenow? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair Inescore? Yes. Very good. All right, we will move on. We have uh, the one uh, we already took care of 7.1, so we'll, uh, oh, we have one more, 6.2, the work plan. Do you have yep. something specific you want to address regarding the work plan? Yeah, I just thought I would highlight the additional items that were added or modified based on the meetings that we've had since the last fiscal year. Uh, as we are, this is a work in progress document. It's meant to be a living document of listing all the different things that we do. And we do look to try to make sure that we're not duplicating things. But for instance, even though maintenance of the transfer station is described there, the floor repair isn't. And it's a pretty significant different new activity. So I'm just highlighting the things that have been added to the work plan for the coming fiscal year. So we've got the floor repair at the transfer station. We've got the process to initiate the development of a small volume transfer station to serve northern Del Norte. Uh, not exactly sure where that would be located, but we will be making progress on that in the coming fiscal year. 
uh, we have the process of negotiating a resolution to the Hambro WSG payment uh, uh, calculations. Uh, we will be working on that in the coming week. Collections franchise, of course, we're working on securing a processing degree agreement, and uh, Change Order 12 was helpful in giving us time to do that. We'll be looking at how we're going to modify our outreach or collections uh, changes to reduce contamination, because that will continue to be an issue. As I mentioned before, there are uh, significant new requirements under AB 1826 and AB 876 regarding planning uh, for organics processing infrastructure. So we'll be bringing that to the board for review and discussion in the coming year. Uh, we want to coordinate cleanup activities on Forest Service properties under the U.S. Forest Service grant. There will be more activities on that this coming year. And then finally, uh, we will be working to try to uh, establish a refueling station for refillable small propane can canisters. Uh, it's under a campaign called Refuel Your Fun, but we certainly are a major destination for campers, and uh, that's a lot of our tourist activity. And so it'd be really great if people who are in urban areas who purchase this refillable propane container could come here and have it refilled somewhere. So we are working with our local propane retailers uh, trying to explore whether or not they would be willing to participate in that campaign. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Ward? Yes. The, um, on page 10, uh, it has a um, monitor and report on it. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, it says apply for and administer additional competitive grants to support local and or regional programs as opportunities arise. And then it says deferred. Mm -hmm. So, um, what can we do to get it out of deferred so we could be proactively going after additional grant funding? Uh, the bottom line is I, I think we need to get staff up and trained on our current activities. That's... Right. Now, now one thing that uh, in, in one of the cities that I worked in, uh, we actually uh, had an outside ent a business that... Uh, what they would search for grants. They would, on a monthly basis, they'd give us like a report of certain grants that are available. We'd go through those and then, you know, we'd ask them, you know, which ones we'd like to have them apply for and, and so on. It just seemed like it was uh, when you have a small staff that it would be uh, something to consider. I appreciate the suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it is something to consider. But uh, as cases in point, uh, I'm actively trying to bring uh, Kira Seymour, who's new to the staff, up to speed on our beverage container grants, on our used oil grants, and that was part of the substance of the budget transfer that you approved today. Mm -hmm. And in addition, we have the U.S. Forest Service Cleanup Grant. We also have a Household Hazardous Waste um, Extended Producer Responsibility Grant that's being administered by another entity. So we actually have a number of grants that are in play right now that we need to be playing catch-up on before mm -hmm. we're applying for additionals. Okay. And then the other thing on the bottom of page 10, um, develop a plan for the resource recovery park property adjacent to the Del Norte County Transfer Station. So where are we at in that process? We, uh, under previous boards and previous grants, uh, we developed a preliminary development plan for the property that's adjacent to the transfer station for that purpose. Uh, at the time, the that activity was not particularly supported by the board and it was deferred. So not, no progress has been made in that regard for some time. It continues to serve, uh, the, the property has value as a buffer to the residences that are behind uh, the property, both for sound and, and uh, noise and dust. So there, there's still some value to the property even as it exists. Yeah, I mean, I, I just see that property as being a valuable slash business park uh, because uh, that's something that our community can use. Uh, you know, people talk about creating jobs and there's nothing better than uh, industrial, you know, type jobs, uh, you know, rather than relying so much as we do on the hospitality industry, which pays very low. So uh, I don't know, maybe possibly working with a realtor, uh, you know, in the area to try to, you know, be a little more aggressive in trying to reach out or maybe, well, you know, somehow to reach out to, see of interest for industrial uses. Are, are you looking that, that we might sell or rent the property? Or are you looking that we would develop it? For, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe uh, someone, well, first of all, if there's other businesses that are interested in it, 
that they could locate there they you know and then we can figure out what needs to be done mm -hmm. but not necessarily that we would do it ourselves but someone else could uh, could do it and it might be like only one or two businesses so you don't have to get uh, that much of a development where you just have one either one located on either end or something I, I totally support these ideas, but mm -hmm. it, I, I think uh, what might be useful, if the board is interested in this, is to, for us to provide a summary of what had been done before, because it, mm -hmm. at, to my knowledge, none of the board members sitting here have discussed that history at all. So it would probably be useful to understand, mm -hmm. how did we come to have this property? What have we thought we might do with it? Mm -hmm. How does that fit into the mission of the agency? I think that would be just a useful informational discussion item if the board is so interested. I, would, yeah. I think that that's fine. And I think that now that we've gotten through the budget and after you have uh, provided the time that you need at a staff level of getting everybody up to speed, uh, a presentation on that in the near future would be would be a good uh, opportunity for us to learn a little bit about that property and its history. Great. Great. Happy to do that. All right. Have anything else? All right. Anything else from the commission? Anything on your own that you would like to uh, bring to light? Anything? Well, I just have one last thing, and, and I know we've talked about this in the mm -hmm. past, and I've talked to city staff about it, but I, I would like maybe as when you have an opportunity to reach out um, to Public Works at the City of Crescent City again, I, I still would like to see us at some point in time be able to make use of the lab services that we have here. I know that there are very specific testing requirements that the Solid Waste Management Authority needs, and I know those are not typically tests that we do, but as part of the JPA, if it's a matter of, of investing in, I don't know what that cost is up front to be able to start doing that, but I would certainly much rather us be investing in our own community in any way that we possibly can. I can't believe that it would cost us more to test here. I would think, but I, I don't know. But if you would, once again, maybe make that annual conversation and say what what would this look like because things change all the time mm -hmm. even our own requirements change and so there may come this point in time where all of a sudden we've had to start testing differently and now we do have the capability of doing it at the wastewater treatment uh, lab so if okay you would, uh, when you have an opportunity to um, reach out on that i'd appreciate it okay yes yeah, just to go along with that, uh, because I was uh, working for the city at the time that they uh, set up their uh, research and uh, testing facility mm -hmm. that they have. And it's, it's a nice separate building uh, by the uh, waste uh, treatment plant. So uh, I don't know, have we worked with them on anything or looked into what's available? We have looked into it. Um, I, I'd be happy to summarize that, but since I've been specifically asked to look into it again, I, I think it's a good time to update that information, make sure I'm presenting what is currently accurate. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Got any final words for us, Mr. Ward? Thank you all. All right. We're adjourned. <laughs>